Hey, what's going on? It's Wednesday, which means it's time for another installment of Fatal Vision. How you doing? So we're going to be picking up right where we left off with day two of Parasite Eve. Let's just jump right into it. So grab a drink and let's play some damn games again. So yeah, how you doing? How's your week been so far? Hopefully you had a nice weekend. Really excited to dive into this because, like I said last week, this was... A time when Square was really firing on all cylinders, and they put together something pretty awesome. I mean, just looking at this camera angle right now, I'm definitely getting Final Fantasy VII vibes. And come to think of it, I may or may not have mentioned this, but apparently the original plan for Final Fantasy VII was to set this in New York. Like Midgar was going to be New York City. That's something else that actually kind of connected me to it as well, is because this takes place in a lot of real locations from New York City. So it's kind of weird when you're doing shit like this in a place that you know and have been to and have seen with your own eyes. Like the Chrysler Building, the Natural History Museum. It definitely makes it a little bit more weird for you. But speaking of Square, what the fuck was that shit all about? Final Fantasy VII Battle Royale mobile games? Really? Where's part two? I mean, you know what? I get it. The whole business model is to make money, and it's going to make a ton of cash. And you know Twitchers are going to be playing the game left and right. So, I mean, from a business perspective, I know it's going to be a success. But also, why? F fucking square, dude, really. What's this? Oh, that's a bit of an upgrade. Alright, so we can get rid of those. Keep the M19. I mean, Seven's remake was polarizing as it is. I'm personally kind of indifferent to the whole thing. I mean, it was entertaining. I mean, the battle system I could live with because I enjoyed it when I played 15, which was another thing that people either loved or hated. Personally, I was a fan of it. But before we get more into that, this is uh, the weapon upgrade system that I had mentioned. It was pretty unique for its time, because usually, um, you know, how do you do this stuff in a modern setting outside of a medieval world where you go from town to town and you find stronger shit? Here, you go to the weapon... Um, guy the armorer and the chief will give you mod permits and occasionally depending on the situations you know the quartermaster will give you you know better weaponry and i thought it was done pretty well because either he can modify it to add stats to it or you talk to wayne and he'll teach you how to tune up stuff so that you can improve the stats themselves so there's either like status stuff like you can fire two or three shots in a turn or it improves critical rate or you, you'll see as we go along yeah so what am i supposed to use that harsh language I mean, his heart's in the right place, but he's just not thinking practically with that one. And no, we are not going to turn this into a gun control debate. If he notified you, then why the fuck do I have to show you? Alright. We got an opening here, but let's open up something here because that's way stronger. But yeah, Square, what are you doing? Especially with that nonsense where they said, yeah, we're working on part two, but it's going to be on PS5 only. Seriously? If I want to see part two of something that I've already beat and I have to upgrade to another system? Fuck you. There's no way I'm shelling out $500 to see the second half of a story that people are just going to ruin for me online anyways. That's just ridiculous. I mean, people bitch about the cyberpunk thing all the time. You know, well, it really shouldn't have stayed in the last generation. You know what? At least they fucking released it on the last generation. 
And from the updates that I've seen, it has gotten considerably better over time as they've optimized it. Just after a while, give me a break. All right, let's move that over here. We don't need this. We don't need that. There's really not much of a selling system, you know? Like, oh, I don't need this anymore. I'll just sell it. Okay, so we'll keep the club. We got that. Yeah, I think we're good to go. Store items. Yeah, here we go. I don't necessarily need this. We're not going back over there again. But speaking of big boom, boom, boom stuff, um, I just saw this earlier today. Uh, Alien Firestorm. Should make some people happy. Like, personally, I think it's awesome. Uh, that's a tough call. All right, all right. Wait, I need the tool. The guy just explained it to me, and I totally forgot about it. But yeah, uh, Aliens games, that's a tough one, because sometimes you're going to find them, and some of them just don't live up to the hype. <laughs> Colonial Marines. <laughs> Excuse me. But Aliens vs. Predator, the ones that Rebellion made, those are really, really good. And now I realize the kid's wearing red basketball shorts, but I remember I used to think that he would just wander around in one of those Hugh Hefner robes with red Reeboks. But the Aliens vs. Predators games, those were all really, really good. The first one was great. Definitely a classic. The second one... I don't think it was really as well received, but I like the story that they added to it, where they tried to give it some like sort of a narrative. And then the one that they put out on PS3, I thought that was great. It kind of sucked that they all left off with cliffhangers, but that was really, really fun. Like, that was something that was like, cool, we're going to get a sequel for it, and then... Whomp, 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 whomp. Not going to happen. But if you haven't looked it up yet, this one, it's, I, I guess from the footage alone, it looks like the Aliens world meets Gears of War, which is pretty cool, because Gears of War was pretty fun. And it looks like it's going to be pretty multiplayer-centered, so I guess you get a bunch of friends together, you get a squad of Marines going, has a couple different stories going for it, so I can dig it. So I can't do anything yet. I have to talk to somebody and find out where the hell I'm going. All right. Or do I go back to Carnegie Hall? Yeah, this is the part where memory kind of dicks with you. But at the very least, can you imagine a game like Final Fantasy where you have to walk all that way? Oh. Okay, so I gotta go talk to the cat. Alright, let's see what this Rodney Dangerfield looking guy has to say. Okay, then let's go meet the press. But yeah, I've been itching to play this game all week long. All week long. And one of my regulars named Bull, he dropped by and he mentioned that um, the game looks really interesting and we had a little chit-chat about 
it, it put a lot of things in the perspective because there's times when growing up i was like man it sucks that we never really got this game and the region that he's from i have a pretty good idea but i'm not going to just be a prick and be like yeah i know he's from this country but you never really stop to think how some areas never got many games at all and if it's where i'm thinking that it is it seems to be stuck right in the middle of paying insane prices for Japanese games that you can barely understand or paying insane shipping costs to get games from the Americas. Because from what I've heard from a lot of people, a lot of European games are just like notoriously censored. So I got you covered, man. We're going to do this entire thing from start to finish. And I don't necessarily want to do this so that we like do it day a week. I like to try to get as much of this as possible so we can maybe move on to the next game. I don't want to drag this out. But we'll get you. We're going to be seeing quite a lot more love for the PS1 era games. That's right. <laughs> Maybe Daniel will punch him out, too. Always got to deal with that little bit of exposition, huh? Yeah, here's where we get our shit. Yeah, you go do that. I'll go out front first and you just stand there. things start to get interesting. You know, PS1, this is where it was at. I mean, the PS2 was pretty groundbreaking, but I personally think that that was like the end of when games were games. It was uh, once they moved on the PS3 and things started getting a lot more cinematic. I mean, like, there was just like a, this great charm to PS1 that even though it's considered primitive by today's standards, I like the fact that they were thinking outside of the box with a lot of these games trying different ideas, see what works, what doesn't work. And it was just all done very, very well. I mean, if we are playing this on, like, PS4 or PS3, you'd have, like, fucking three hours worth of cutscenes. And that's always been, like, kind of my problem with, like, say, the Metal Gear series. It's like, especially since I'm going through and playing all of them right now. As time went by, they just got more and more cinematic. But, I mean, Metal Gear Solid 4, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to take a look at it until I buy a PS3, because 
it's not available anywhere else and also i got to get one of those things that helps you record the footage off of that shit i don't want to deal with an elgato again my god but like the first time i played metal gear solid 4 i was like man what a great movie it's like there's one cutscene shit it lasted like what an hour hour and a half that's ridiculous And then they finally fixed things with Metal Gear Solid 5, which I still play today. In fact, I played it yesterday. People can find any way they want to knock that game, but I loved it. You know, but it's like we had Metal Gear Solid 1, which was like the perfect blend of everything, and then Metal Gear Solid 2, which at the time... I mean, we'll talk about this a little bit more when I finally sit down and review the DM thing. <laughs> Old pervert. Yeah, too, it, it was very, very weird at the time, and... I played through it again when I was doing the footage for it. I have a newfound respect for it because a lot of the shit that they covered is very, very relevant to what's going on today. But it was just a little too cinema heavy. And then they scaled it back for three, which I'll never make any bones about. That to me was my personal favorite out of the entire uh, Solid series. I mean, the Twin Snakes, they tried to make it seem a little more anime-ish, and I think it failed miserably. I liked the gameplay changes, but I didn't like the changes that they did with a lot of the other stuff. But I think after uh, Snake Eater, Kojima kind of painted himself into a corner, because I personally found Big Boss and his character arc to be way more interesting than Solid Snake. And I don't know if it was because... Shit, I mean, you spend... At least... Say, we've got Metal Gear 1, then we've got... If, if we were going to go through the entire thing, you'd have Metal Gear, and then you would have Snake's Revenge, and then you would have Metal Gear 2, and then you would have Metal Gear Solid... So we're talking at least four games where Big Boss is the bad guy. You have no information about him. And then, because he's not really listed as, say, a bad guy in the second one. But it was just that now you're finally learning about this mysterious figure. And you actually get more of a backstory for him, even though it's a prequel, I understand that. But you get more of a, more of a backstory and an understanding for Big Boss's motives than you do with Snake. So they managed to give you know make one character more interesting in one game than they did with another character through the course of what four games? Technically five if you want to count the MSX and the NES versions is different. But I mean there's literally like no exposition in the snake's life at all. I mean, they at the very least threw you a bone in Solid. And then you had Solid 2, which... Oh my god. I was so pissed off. Who the fuck is riding? They're looking at each other like, who gives a shit? Wow. Uh-huh. 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 
Yeah. <laughs> You know, I think it's been said that this is another one of those games that absolutely deserves a remake, and in theory, I completely agree, but even just thinking back at it, Square does not have a good track record with doing remakes. I mean, we've got seven, and then remember all those um, different versions of Final Fantasy IV? Probably the only really good one that's actually come out. Well, there's two, being fair. There's the Game Boy Advance one, which was great, and then there was the PSP version, which was phenomenal. But I mean, I'm just thinking back to the way that Square has done remakes of things and how they like to change shit. Think of uh, Final Fantasy Tactics, The War of the Lions. We talked about that a little bit last week. I mean, the PS1 version couldn't have done better with that one, and then they did War of the Lions, and I'm like, oh, great! All new um, stories and shit. This is going to be fantastic. And then they changed some of the sounds in it. And it just sounded very, very weird to me. And then they also changed up quite a few story elements. They changed up some of the like the names. And it just... I don't like change. Well, that was a productive day. Man, he's hauling ass. So that's how you can tell that this game is definitely a little off base because there's no way in hell that you could ever get through New York City that fucking fast. when Eve goes and assaults the police station? I guess not. Wait. Just so I'm at the end of the hole. Again. Where are people still gathering at the stage if they canceled it? See, somebody really dicked up here because if they canceled it and Melissa's a prime suspect. Either you get the word out, because I understand you can't like send like a mass like text to people because this is before the age of smartphones. But don't you think you might want to, you know, station people at the park entrance and be like, no, 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 don't go in there. Cool. I didn't really have to do anything to get that one. But that's like such a common trope in most of these movies, and it always happens in New York, too. We can't get any information out about something that's going on that's really going to affect the city because we don't want to panic on our hands.
Okay. I love walking into an argument like that. Ooh, what do we got here? Can't bitch at that. Mm hmm. Uh huh. You know, I mean, the guy does have a good, um, a good perspective. I mean, you can never look at a gun like a toy. It's a tool. And with any tool, you have to be careful with it and learn how to use it before you operate it. Where the hell is it? Do I have to talk to him to be able to tune it up? Yeah. No, you fucking Momo. Wait a minute. I had the thing. It's under items. Really? All right, here we go. I think I figured it out now. All right, change this weapon to that. Use item. No. Oh, fuck it. I'm not messing with this shit right now. I've had a half an hour of blab and now I want to shoot something. Which is probably what the guy doesn't want to begin with. <laughs> and poor Daniel sitting out in the car like, where the fuck is she? I'll be out in a second, Daniel. I gotta go through more of this dialogue first. You got the afterburners? Nothing like a little bit of motion sickness to get you through the day. Is he saying Ben? Or Ben? Or Ben? Uh-oh. Who the hell would go in Essential Park after... You know, the sun goes down anyways. Like, that was like a rule growing up. It was just like, never go into Central Park after dark. Like, everybody knew that shit. Bet your ass I'm going to save the progress. You think I want to go back after all this shit? I gotta make a long distance phone call first.
Very catchy music. Like, this is definitely one of those OSTs that I could just, like, vibe out to and just listen to while I'm driving. Central Park Zoo. To be honest with you, it's kind of nice to be able to go back into Central Park without worrying about landmines and dead junkies in the park. if I was walking into a cutscene or what. Oh, the boomerang guy. Uh, I don't know what his problem was, but... God, you gotta love it when you see she's holding an automatic rifle, and then once it goes back into normal mode, it switches right to a pistol. Oh, for Christ's sake. never understand that about games like this when you think when you see things with like a practical lock or a practical door that you can't get through why don't you just kick the fucking thing open like what's stopping you like that always drove me nuts about the original resident evil boot that fucking door open Get this one. Just creeps in your mind and stays in there. Another snake. And it's always with the birds. This is going to be a bitch to dodge these things, though. But I do got to say, I like the ability to where you can actually pick targets and devote shots to different things. That all works out very, very well. Now all this junk that I've been picking up, if I remember correctly, uh, you bring it to Wayne at the police station, and once you bring him a certain amount of junk, it'll turn into either a mod tool or it'll turn into some type of a shit. Like, there's, like there is absolutely a point to collecting all the stuff. Because if all it did was just take up all of your uh, inventory space, like this is done, Jesus.
Yeah, that's it. Yeah, now the M16 will fire three rounds on a turn. That's where this stuff comes into play. I mean, this definitely sits with your typical Final Fantasy fare, where it's definitely worth your time to level up and wander around and grab as many items as you possibly can. Get out of here. You know, naturally when you see the snakes, you're going to assume that if they bite you, you're going to get poisoned. Dead. I mean, that's always been a rule of mine. Whenever I play any type of Final Fantasy game, is just grind, grind, grind. You know, especially when I'm playing something like Final Fantasy VIII. Before I even go into Ifrit's Cavern, I'm absolutely out of that beachhead for like two hours or going into the training center for a while and at least get up to like level like 10 or 11 gain a couple new abilities because by the time that the game really starts to kick your ass you'll at least be at some reasonable level so that you can kind of handle it I mean to me it's win-win because I mean best case scenario you're always levels ahead of someone you know else or, worst case scenario, you're at least on par with the boss that you're fighting. No shit. Alright. Need a key. You've got a gun. Shoot the lock. Oh, fuck. I mean, that'll always be kind of the pisser to games like this, is it really could benefit from having, like, a little bit of a tiny sparkle. Just to let you know, hey, there's, uh, something really cool here. Grab it. Watch, it's medicine. Oh, it's the zoo key. Ugh. <laughs> oh, shit. Alright, what can I discard? I've got enough... Nope. It's gonna be a gun. Of course it is. It's a grenade launcher. Which is great! That's something you definitely want to hold on to, right? A little Jill Valentine trope for you there. You know, and of course everybody's going gaga over Resident Evil 8 for all the wrong reasons. I mean, I don't know, the time to start making it into, like, something episodic was a long time ago. And when I say episodic, I mean kind of like the Halloween treatment, where they figured that, yeah, you know, we can make this a, more of an anthology than anything else. Where it's got the base title of Resident Evil, but it, you know, revolves around different shit happening. I think the problem with it, though, is that it just suffered from a really bad case of it was afraid of its own individuality. I mean, they just had to throw a Chris Redfield and an umbrella in there. Try to give you, like, some sort of, like, a feeling to remind you that, okay, you're playing Resident Evil. Which, I don't know. It, it depends on the way that you approach it and do it. It can either work or it can just fall flat on its ass.
I mean, personally, with Halloween 3, I love the idea of having an anthology series. Kind of like, eh, not so much like Creepshow, because Creepshow, you know, told four different stories in an episode. Well, not an episode, but a movie. But, well, now it's episodes because it's a TV series on Shudder, which is actually pretty damn good. But wait, what am I exchanging out? Alright, well, I don't necessarily need that because I got the one thing, right? And this will probably be some shit that I'll never ever use. Alright, so we'll just use that for this. And then we'll grab that back. Yeah. It's funny, though, how Halloween 3 has turned into, like, this cult film, and it, it really is. It's a great movie. I thought it had this nice concept to it, and what made me laugh my ass off about it was is that around the time that it came out, people were bitching, well, there's no Michael Myers in it, and the studio was like, okay, you want Michael Myers? Fine. Take your fucking Michael Myers. And then you got uh, Halloween 4, which... <laughs> Halloween 5. <laughs> Six. Ugh. They were all horrific. H2O. I don't give a shit if the animals have escaped. Let me get out of here. Like, there's bigger problems on hand here. I mean, personally, the last time a good Halloween movie came out was the, the 2018 one. That one was phenomenal. I can't wait for Halloween Kills. But you know what? Looking back at all those spectacular versions of, of sequels that, that the Halloween series got, don't you think maybe it would have been better if they had stuck with the fucking masks? Like that, to me, I think that's like the perfect way of a studio saying, Okay, you want garbage? Here's your garbage. And boy, did people have to live with that one. They made people suffer through, what, five other movies? Actually, come to think of it, four, five, six, H2O, and then the found footage one with uh, Busta Rhymes in it. Son of a bitch, that was like five movies. Wow, that's bad. But it's the same thing with uh, with Resident Evil. Oh, here we go. Yuck. If you had a choice, would you rather uh, burst into flames or be turned into a giant gelatinous blob? Okay, so how the hell do I... Oh, wait. This is new. Yeah, let's just follow... Oh, there's a big sign that says backstage. your plans. You pretty much had your way with everybody last night, lady. I mean, really, what the hell is left there? Burn down Carnegie Hall. I saw something. something up here. Is 
But yeah, the Resident and Evil thing, I mean... I'd have to say about four is when they really should have start, you know, tried to at least attempt to start like a new story. I mean, Code Veronica was all right. That was a pretty decent game, and everybody loves four so much. But I'd have to say that after three and after they nuked Raccoon City, it should have become something else. Like that's the time when they could have implemented something like seven. You know, where you have like this new character and you're stuck in this house. But it, it was just... I, I felt that it was just a little late to do that. And now you've got Village, which has uh, got ideas from... I don't know, uh, what Part 4 was originally supposed to be with Supernatural stuff. But then, of course, you got Chris Redfield again, and now you've got Ethan again. Okay, so let's do this. Uh, tune up armor. Yeah, you know what? This is kind of a tough call. That I think I might want to hold on to. Because it's one thing to transfer the stats over, it's another thing to transfer the statuses over. Like, the way that we were able to turn this into a three-shot thing with the firepower that it has attached to it, that's fantastic. But I think that's something that should definitely be saved for later. Don't you hate when that happens? Go all the way around and there's the entrance again. I'm starting to feel like I should have saved at that phone. But chances are we'll level up again. three pieces of junk that I missed out on. Yeah, once you start to get to the rhyme or the reason with the junk, you'll understand that it's actually kind of important. You know, watch. I've gone all this way and I found out that the, like, the event triggers back over at the stage or some shit like that. That would be ridiculous. Oh, we got a polar bear on the loose. Great. An electric polar bear. Cool. And I've got poison, too. Yeah. in the ass. <laughs> the bald-headed killer bear. <laughs> nice. I'm so glad the ammo doesn't, like, break off into its own bracket. Like, that would be horrific. That absolutely winds up being, like, one of the most annoying things in Resident Evil. Like, after it hits a certain juncture, like, you get too many handgun bullets that'll break off into its own bracket. And, I mean, it is pretty generous, 
So it's not like, okay, you've got like 30 rounds and then it's gonna break off into its own thing. Dead. These things are definitely getting a little grabby too, aren't they? Parasite energy thing fills up on its own. Now, altogether, this is a pretty well put together game. It really is, and you just can't argue with the results of it. You know, there's parts where there's uh, quite a few words. You gotta wind up digging through a lot of story. But at the very least, the story is well written. I'll keep that shit away from me. Something else to keep note of, too, is that when you do the attacks, even while you're attacking, the active time gauge still fills, and I love that. Definitely makes these fights way more fair. I know I'm going back the other way, but it just seems like I that, like there should be a phone here or something to save your game. Maybe an item box. Really? Nothing? Nada. Zip zero zilch. All right, two boomerangs, right? Yeah. I mean, the enemy variety is actually pretty good, too. Oh, you bastard. Not a thing, huh? Well, I certainly don't feel like going up above there and dealing with those friggin' plant people again. But yeah, I, I have a feeling I missed a phone some, somewhere. Come on, Aya, move your ass. Well, what do you know? When you level up, I don't think it fills up your life, though. Nope. Never be ashamed to save. See, I remember when I first tried to do the Resident Evil reviews, the first time that I played it, like, in forever. I was trying to be hardcore and not save the game. <laughs> This goddamn hunter got me as I was going down the stairs, and it was in that one main hallway. Oh yeah, here's the worm.
Yeah, I think we might want to heal. Might be a good idea. And while you're doing the parasite attacks, it stops the action. Like, this game is seriously as fair as possible when it comes to combat. You generally, when you find yourself dying, it's usually because of poor planning. I can't really say that there's moments where it's like, oh, this is so unfair. Not in this game. Because, I mean, generally, you're in charge of your own defense, really. Right, come up over here. Right, one down. Peek it over how good this music is, though. Sandworms from Beetle Juice on my ass. I mean, realistically, I think these are earthworms. Now, there's something else I can blab about and bitch and moan about, too. Is, um... That Amico thing. When I first heard about it, beyond excited for it. The hype has kind of died down for me, though. Not because of the delays. I can always understand a delay. Because, I mean, I'd much rather have it done right than done wrong. But, uh... Honestly, the starting library is just not necessarily blowing me away. I mean, I've asked several times already, you know, so what's the future plans with reviving some of the classics that you got? Never got an answer on it. And I've asked it at least like two or three times directly. Because, I mean, as far as um, throwing a ball through, uh, you know, cornhole or whatever the fuck they call the thing, that's not necessarily really making me go, oh shit, I gotta buy this one. You know, but stuff like, um, the Missile Command remake, that's looking amazing. And I mean, I think that's going to be like the main selling point for most adults is going to be pretty much hitting that nostalgia vibe. Oh, fuck you with your 30 hits. But see, that right there is a downside to... having the three shots thing, because you have to fire three shots as far as I know. Right, you know what, I think we can use this. But I mean, like, Evil Knievel Stunt Racer, if this thing is supposed to appeal to kids... <laughs> I mean, if I showed my daughter's Evil Knievel, who the fuck is this guy? Well, he was a stunt racing guy in the 70s. Okay, cool. What he's gonna do is clean sweep. Wow. Now this bonus point aspect, that's something else that you can apply to your own stats. See, it's that stuff right there that I think is totally amazing. Like, just about the combat and the upgrade system. But it's pretty much like I've 
like consistently been saying about you know stuff like on the PS1 and on the PS2. They thought outside the box and they used different mechanics. It's like I remember people used to laugh about um, Alien Resurrection and how terrible of a game that was, which it really was, but that's actually the game that pretty much invented the way that modern first-person shooters play. You know, with the analog sticks, instead of using, like, the top bumper buttons. But, I mean, that kind of leads to the problem, though, is that's where, once again, things just become a standard, and then they just kind of go from there. They didn't have differentiating systems for how you upgrade your character or how you do your weapons and shit like that. Nowadays, it's really all the same. This is definitely one of the weirder fights. Sounds like a jealous ex. I mean, as far as fights go, this is definitely one of the more claustrophobic ones that you could ever have. He's gonna get me. Yeah, we need that. Oh, now it's gonna hit me. Come on. Wait, the fight's already over? I don't know what that was all about. Hey, no means no. Imagine having that shit playing in your ears. Ow! It's like they really wanted you to feel her pain. Shit. Uh-huh. What's the matter, son? Did you not clean your room? Did you not do your homework?
That's a lie. Yeah, I got so sidetracked talking about the Amico thing. Um, if they had like made more of a focus on reviving like the old Intellivision classics and the old Atari classics and things like that, that's it, absolutely a seller right there. But you need to you need to have a dedicated mascot. Like Evil Knievel is not going to be your console mascot. And if you're going to go back to the way gaming used to be, you had. Nintendo with Mario as their front runner. You had Namco with Pac Man as their guy. You had Sega with Sonic. The Amico could theoretically have Earthworm Jim, and that should probably be one of their launch titles right there. I mean, that's another thing I've brought up too that I never got a word back from. Um, I guess maybe it's because my channel's not big enough. <laughs> Fucking hate that attitude too. Like, I'm not saying that's what it is, but I always hated that. Like, if, if somebody interacts with you, like, the first thing they do is they look at your subscriber count, and that's, like, what determines whether or not you're worth interacting with. That's bullshit. Um, but I had asked, well, you got Dave Perry in charge. Why don't you, like, do Wild Number 10? You know, especially with the way the controller is set up. That would be amazing. You know, that right there, definitely, you, you wouldn't be able to keep up with the pre-orders. But I guess the marketing scheme is supposed to go towards people who have never played video games before, but want to buy video games for their kids, but they don't want violent games with bad imagery in it, which I can understand that, you know, different strokes for different folks. But at the same time, kids already know about Nintendo. Kids already know about things like Pokemon and Animal Crossing. Because, you know, there's all these channels out there that are geared towards kids that play shit like Minecraft, Roblox, um, Animal Crossing, and, and Pokemon, yada, 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 yada. Kids already know about that sort of stuff. So when it comes to... Mom, can I get this? They're going to naturally go towards Nintendo because there's nothing violent about Animal Crossing. I mean, the most violent thing that actually does happen to you is you get stung by a bee. Oh, yeah, here's my Ada. What a douchebag. You know, anybody who has that sort of an attitude deserves to be kicked right in the nuts. Yeah, fuck that guy. Well, we've definitely gone over the hour marker for this day. <laughs> I figured that this would uh, be over a little bit quicker, but I I'd say that uh, the chapters are all consistent with one another, so I guess what we can do is is um, we'll cut it off at the end of day one, we'll save it, we'll keep the recording going, and we'll flip through day two, so that way uh, when you guys watch this, if you want to see part three, it'll be available as well. I mean, I'm not going to do any fancy editing for any of this sort of shit anyway. I mean, at most, all I'm really going to do is just put the intro, the outro. So it's not going to be uh, 
anything special. But once again, I, I also said I don't necessarily want to make this one of those things where this goes on for like two months. Like that would get a little trying for a lot of people, especially if there's half people who want to see the next thing and then half people who want to see what's next after this. And I'm talking in terms of what game are you going to play next? Kunihiko Maeda. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. That's quite a feeling I don't think I've ever felt before. Like, I mean, I've had acid reflux, I've had indigestion, but have you ever felt like you were about to be fucking ignited before? But if you were a monster, you wouldn't know.
the whole time that they're talking, I'm looking at that item box in the back, and I want to see what's in it. <laughs> It's the end of day two, and we're definitely going to be picking up day three in just a couple of minutes. Uh, or otherwise, if you've had enough of this one for this week, I got a really kick-ass randomizer for you this Friday, so be sure to tune in for that one. Otherwise, I'll see you next week for another installment of Fatal Vision. Either way, thank you so much for dropping by and inviting me into your day like this. I hope you guys are having a great week so far, and we'll see you really soon. So until next time, auf Wiedersehen. Well, bye now. 